Hey guys, what's up? I'm so glad to have you back into the channel. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. So last week we talked about shutter speed and that's one of the sides of the exposure triangle. And today we're gonna to talk about aperture. So grab your camera and let's do this. So what's going on? Uh, we are doing a quick series of camera basics. Okay, so if you haven't seen the first video, uh, the link's gonna be up here or maybe up here. I don't know what's how you go. This is the first time I'm recommending a video. But one of the two. So that video is about shutter speed, which I highly recommend you to watch it first and then come back to me. So pause this video and go watch that one. I'll wait. I assume, I assume you watched the other one. I probably gave enough time. So let's go. What is aperture? In a quick way of saying what aperture is, is how much the diaphragm of your camera is, up, is gonna open. It's either if it's gonna be like this, or if it's gonna be wide open. That's gonna have a different impact on the final result of your photo. So first things first, the aperture is measured in f-stops. What does that tell you? That is the universal language for when you're talking about a lens with a wide aperture or, or a narrow aperture, that's that's how it works. So if the number is smaller, it means it's wide open, such as f1.2 or f1.4, f1.8. If it, if it goes to a wide number, such as f22, 29, that means it's super narrow, super closed. Okay, with that out of the way, let's move into what happens if you have a wide open or narrow down. Now, the most obvious part is how much light is gonna come in. Much more light will come in through a lens that's open like this than through a lens that's open like this. Quite obvious. If you open more your window, more light will come in. But also if your lenses are wide open, it will give you a blurred background. So that's gonna separate the subject from the background. So for example, if I close the aperture of these lenses now, one is gonna be darker, so I'm gonna have to compensate with more light. And two, my background is going to be less blurry. Since what I want is some separation from me to the background, I want the background to be blurred. And the same the same happens here. For example, my face is on focus, but my fingers are out, out of focus because the focus point is here. Now, the wider the aperture is, the smaller the focus area will be. So for example, if you go down to f1.2 and you focus on your eye, maybe your ear is already going to be out of focus. Usually a lens with a wider aperture will give a more professional look to the photo because it's gonna separate your subject to the background and it's gonna make all the attention go into the thing that is in focus and the rest is just gonna be composition. This is what the famous depth of field means, is to have the separation from the subject to maybe the foreground and the background. Wide aperture lenses are very important tools in in basically every kind of photography. If you're shooting portraits, you want to separate your background your subject to the background. If you're shooting food, you want to separate your food, your dish from the background. If you're shooting drinks, you want to separate your subject from the background. You want your background to be part of the composition, but you want the focus on your product, on your person, on your subject. So when, when you use a narrow aperture, well, you use when you want to get more stuff in focus. So for example, if I'm shooting a product and it has a big label, I want the whole label to be in focus. So instead of shooting on f1.2, I will go up to f8, for example. And that will make sure, that will guarantee that the whole product and mainly its label, its brand, is that sharp in focus. You may also use a narrower aperture when you don't have an ND filter, for example, which, as I told you in the last video, is like a sunglasses for your for your lenses. If you want to have a long exposition, but there's too much light coming in, if you close your aperture, you're reducing the amount of light, you're balancing the exposure, basically. The last thing about aperture is that it shapes the light. For example, if you shoot with a wide open aperture directly to a light bulb, you get a circle of light. When you have a scene, for example, of the sun setting behind a tree and you shoot that sun with a narrow aperture, you can see lines coming around this, coming from the sun It will kind of shape into a star. A general rule is that a, a wider aperture will give your photos a more flattering look. One, because it separates your subject from the background. 
too, because it allows more light to come in. And so you can take photos with a faster shutter speed, which means sharper photos. So why should they not just use wider apertures? Well, lenses with a wider aperture are much more expensive. And most of the, light, the lenses with wider aperture are gonna be fixed lenses. So for example, they're gonna be fixed on 50 millimeters or fixed or on 100 or 85. They're not gonna be zoom lenses. We will get into the fight of prime versus zoom lens uh, on another video. Okay, so I know there was a lot of information, but let's try to sum summarize it. A wider aperture is gonna bring more light into the sensor, which is good because brighter pixels means sharper pixels and also will give you a better depth of field, which is a separation. And a narrower aperture will, will let less light into the, the sensor, but will give you a bigger window of focus, which can help you in certain occasions. In the end, everything that I'm saying here is just theory. And if you want to learn and see how these two things are different from one to the other, there's only way there's only one way, which is getting your camera and going out there and taking pictures. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope this video has helped you instead of making you more confused. Uh, and if, it, if you have any questions, uh, please just, just drop them in the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if this video helped you, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and ring that bell if you want to get notifications. And I know you want to get notifications. As usual, it was a pleasure, and I'll see you next week.